guys, it's your boy Milano Miguel, back at it again with another video, and today is episode 7 of the AC Milan vlog series. So here we go. So, match day 7 in the Italian Serie A, Genoa versus AC Milan. Milan are playing away from home, playing at Genoa, and in the previous match, in match day 6, we lost against Fiorentina at home, 1-3. But before I get into the match against Genoa, we shall go into news and transfer rumors so in the news last week uh, ex AC Milan player Kiyosuke Hande came out to say that he'd be willing to play for Milan he tweeted on Twitter that uh, if AC Milan need him they know where to find him um, additionally in the news uh, Gianluigi Donnarumma supposedly rejected his contract with Newell um, there was a room there's a rumor that there was talks between AC Milan and Gianluigi Donnarumma and his agent Nino Raiola for contract extension because he's currently contracted until 2021 um, the contract negotiations was for a two-year extension which would be until 2023 and that his salary would go up to 60 million euros um, which supposedly Gianluigi Donnarumma Rejected. Additionally, Mohamed uh, Ihataren um, is on the transfer rumor list, a uh, player at PSV. Um, supposedly, his starting price for a transfer would be 30 million euros. In addition to that, uh, Rudy Garcia has been linked uh, as a potential replacement for Marco Giampaolo if he gets sacked. So we will look into that. Um, last week, in last week's episode, episode 6, I mentioned that AC Milan club legend uh, Andriy Shevchenko uh, was rumored to be one of the coaching options for our club. Suppose uh, Marco Giampaolo would get sacked, but Shevchenko came out to say that I love Milan, but the club has not contacted me. My effort is focused on the Ukraine national team, and that's via the Rossoneri blog. So, I guess AC Milan haven't contacted Andriy Shevchenko yet. But, um, yeah. Uh, there's also a rumor that uh, Frank Cassier would be sold in January, and there's interest from Wolverhampton Wanderers in AS Monaco. I know that previously in the summer there was a deal agreed between Milan and AS Monaco, but Cassier didn't want to go there because he wants to play in the Premier League, so we'll see how things play out in January. I don't know if he would go, they probably might sell him, but who knows. Um, also a rumor that we might uh, try to sign Olivia Giroud from Chelsea in January. I don't know how reliable that is, but then again, we might do that because I feel like we do need one more attacking option even though we have Leal and Ravage and Piontek but one more might be safe just in case anyone gets injured or anything. Supposedly there is also um, a rumor that Isco and Suso would be in a swap deal so that means that Suso would go to Real Madrid, and in return, we would get uh, Isco. I don't know if Real Madrid would actually let Isco go for Suso, but that would very much be an interesting signing, and I would be all for that, to be honest. Um, Isco is a great attacking player, he has great creativity, and he's skilled. So, who knows? And I know that Zinedine Zidane doesn't really use Isco like that so who knows maybe it could happen um, additionally Rodrigo de Paul is Milan's main target to sign in January um, Rodrigo de Paul plays for Udinese um, he was in one of the previous episodes as a transfer rumor but I wouldn't be opposed to this he should be from about 25 to 30 million euros also so we'll see how that plays out uh, Hakan Chalanoglu does not want to leave AC Milan. Uh, reports say that he does not want to leave. 
there was a rumor that in the summer that RP Leipzig were going to try to get Chalanoglu to join their side, and in return that we would re we would receive uh, the French defender Upacam Miano. I don't know how to say his name, but uh, yeah. Also in the news, Mattia Caldara, the fan favorite signing from Juventus last season who got injured, will be back in training for AC Milan next week. So keep a lookout for that. Um, hopefully he has a speedy recovery and he can help out the team. Um, reports say that Ante Rebic is struggling to get play time under manager Marco Giampaolo because he doesn't fit Giampaolo's tactics. We know that Giampaolo has a certain system in which he believes in certain players and he wants them to play a certain role, but if they're not playing that role, they probably won't play. Um, personally, I think Rebic is a good player, the way that he plays, and right now Piontek really isn't working for us, but we'll see how things play out. Um, I hope that Rebic does get a chance to play. He's only played about 68 minutes, but um, we'll see how things play out with Marco Giampaolo. Um, Marco Giampaolo was asked if he would step down from his job by the media last week and he responded that he will not quit on Milan and he will not give up. He said, quote unquote, we're working to do better. We are already working at eight o'clock this morning when the interview occurred. Uh, he said, you say I work a lot, but work badly, we'll find the solution. Resigning, never. Leaving means giving up and we never give up. So, manager Marco Giampaolo is determined to stay and fight and do what he has to do to keep his job. So now, let's get into the game. Uh, Genoa versus AC Milan. So, starting lineups came up and the usual 4-3-3. Uh, Donnarumma, Calabria, Romagnoli, Leo Duarte, uh, Theo Hernandez, Frank Cassier, Lucas Biglia, uh, Suso Bonaventura gets his first start. Uh, Piontek and Chalanoglu. Chalanoglu, yes. Um, but before kickoff, uh, there was a report that Donnarumma was feeling ill, so he didn't play. Uh, specifically, his illness was stomach problems. So Pepe Reina started in goal. Um, to reiterate the first half, I didn't really watch the first half. Um, I was out and I didn't really have connection, so I couldn't watch the first half. But there was lack of possession. Usually we have possession. In the last couple of games that we played, we usually had around 60% possession. Lack of creativity. Uh, no creative midfielders playing today. No Ben Acer. So lack of creativity. Um, just struggling with an identity attacking wise on what to do. Um, Genoa gets a free kick in the 41st minute. Um, Shona uh, takes a shot and Pepe Reina fumbles the ball and it ends up going into the net. A couple of minutes later there was a altercation in which there was a foul on the pitch where a Genoa player was down because of a head injury. The Genoa bench was not happy with that because the game was supposed to be stopped, but the game wasn't stopped. Um, and then ex-player, ex-Milan player, Ricardo Saponara was sent off, getting a red card from the bench. Um, and then the half ended. Um, so I tuned in to the game after halftime. I was kind of disappointed that we were losing. Disappointed when I saw the kind of goal that went in. Um, but I was like, okay, let's hopefully turn this around in the second half. So, at halftime, Marco Giampaolo said, I told the lads to keep their cool and turn it around. It's not wise to bleed in the presence of sharks. Which is quite interesting because they honestly did turn it around. So, after halftime, uh, Lucas Paqueta and Rafael Leal come on. Lucas Paqueta comes on for uh, Hakan Chalanoglu, 
and Rafael Leal comes on for Christoph Piontek because Christoph Piontek honestly hasn't done much recently. So as soon as they come on, instant impact to the game, uh, pace attacking wise, just beautiful on the on the attack. We get a free kick, and this man Theo Hernandez decides to step up, taking the quick counter attack, uh, free kick. Uh, just running into the box and taking a shot on goal and he scores and that is exactly what Milan needed in this game uh, I was so pumped when I saw that it was kind of like uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold's goal against Barcelona but it wasn't a corner kick it was a free kick uh, he basically stop and go ran down the wing got into the box took a shot went to the net uh, so props to him because I know that Theo Hernandez definitely has something to give to this team um, when he was injured for the past month and a half we were missing that and I'm glad that he's back and I'm glad that he's showing that okay I can take charge when I need to take charge he's had a couple instances in previous matches where he's almost scored so deservedly he got his goal and he that instantly changed the momentum of the game after that, we kept pressing, kept pressing. We got into the box. Great pass uh, from Frank Kessier, I believe. Um, Leal tried to catch it um, and get a shot. Um, couldn't get a shot because defender decides to stick his hand out. And VAR review, red card, penalty given. That is absolutely the correct decision. That was clearly a goal scoring opportunity denied because of the handball. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and also, the laws in Syria just say that if the ball touches your hand, it's a handball. So point blank, right decision. Uh, Frank Kessier steps up to the penalty scores beautifully and we're up 2-1 um, so honestly like I said the momentum of the game changed as soon as Theo Hernandez scored that counter-attacking goal we were playing great kept trying to go push for another goal wasn't lucky to to get one and then Davide Calabria was passing the ball kind of lost his touch uh, Christian Kwame got the ball and Davide Calabria making the good foul grabs his shirt and gets a second yellow and gets sent off with the red card Andrea Conti comes in for that um, then we're just playing uh, defense um, conceded a penalty um, because Kwame ran into the box and Reina came out uh, although yes Reina did come out I don't believe there was any contact Reina got close to Kwame but then pulled out of the challenge Kwame dived um, and the ref pointed to the spot the ref did hear um, from the VAR room like the headset he was communicating with the VAR officials but the ref didn't go to check to see if the call was actually correct or not he let the call stand on the field Shone steps up who scored the goal against Pepperina earlier Shone steps up misses the penalty in my opinion ball doesn't lie I knew that wasn't a penalty so I just felt like a miracle would happen and he'd miss and he missed so that was in the dying stages of the game um yeah the 93rd minute because the penalty was given away in the 89th and then the var review blah blah, blah. 93rd minute uh you know penalty saved and then in the 94th minute because there was 95 minutes of added time but a three an extra three minutes was added because of the var review Samu Castillejo gets sent off on the bench like what are you doing but I mean that doesn't really affect us um, probably not gonna play anyways but uh yeah crazy game for AC Milan uh, deserved win we showed so much grit and determination in that second half 
after those substitutions. And I think that those players who were subbed on need to start in the next game so that we don't have to play catch up um, so we can start and press and probably get a goal in the first half instead of waiting till the second half. Um, so very happy with that. I know last week I said that Giampaolo out, but I'm going to go back on my word and I'm going to say give him a couple more games because I was listening to the Milan Weekly podcast and they brought up an interesting point that uh, last year at this time, uh, Atalanta, who qualified through the Champions League last year, uh, they were in 17th or 18th place at this point. And had they fired Gasparini, they would have not made it to the Champions League. So although it is very frustrating that we've lost a ton of games, and thank God that uh, the the losing streak is over, but I think that we should give Giampaolo a little bit more time. Um, even Maldini is willing to give him a little bit more time, so I think that we should give him some more time. And even Saki, our old Milan uh, manager, also says that if we were to sack Giampaolo, it would be a huge mistake. Um, I'm guessing people really believe in this guy. And some sort of tactician I mean you got to give it to the man the, the guy uh, made Fabio Quagliarella uh, score his most goals and he's 36 years old uh, you know that does, that just doesn't happen out of nowhere so in conclusion happy with the win happy with three points we're now sitting in 11th place in the Italian Serie A so I'm happy with that um, let's just trust the process for the Milan and let's just give Giampaolo some more time. Alright, see you guys next week. Peace.